Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Bible study with Dr. Viv. And we're covering the spiritual warfare series. And we're on part seven. And the title subtitle is The Tricks of the Trickster on the Church. And we all know who the trickster is. Amen. It's the devil himself. Hello, Cheryl. I'm the first one on this evening. God bless you, darling. Amen. Amen. We know who the trickster is tonight. And I want you to feel free to share and send up hearts and thumbs up. If something blesses you, but please click your share buttons. Everybody that's coming on, please click your share buttons. LaShonda, hey, sweetheart, click those share buttons so that somebody else can be blessed on this evening. Amen. God is so good. He is so, so, so good. Amen. And I just honor and praise him for all of his blessings in spite of what's going down, what's happening, what's not happening. Amen. I try to stay uh, centrally focused on the Lord and what he's trying to say. Hello, evangelist Vicki Ross. Hey, some kind of evangelist she is. Yes, she is. Amen. We love you, sweetheart. Amen. And so tonight we're going to get into this word of the Lord. We're waiting on just a few more to come in. You know, I just go on and dive off into it. Amen. I am at, uh, at present trying to get this website together and I'm going to connect the website to Facebook. And those of you who are at West Haven, uh, any other people who want to seed into three areas, I've been told and people have been blessing me. Uh, with uh, seeds of donations, but we also want you to consider the Rama Outreach Ministries and the West Haven Community Church. We're trying to hook all those up with PayPal. So if you don't have a PayPal account, it's free. Go on in and set it up. Go to paypal.com and set it up. Amen. So you'll be ready uh, to seed into some good ground. Amen. And I appreciate each of you coming on. Uh, God is just an awesome God, and we just praise Him for his blessings and i want you to know today um not relating it to anything in, a, in particular i just want you to know today that this series is right on time before we knew any of this was coming lord had put this in my heart because we are in warfare and we must understand you know when things hit me like today and i'm going like okay god it looked like i was discombobulated my man was over here and it was over there and this wasn't going right that wasn't going right and and uh, I had to pull center myself so that I wouldn't allow the enemy to take me down that road because it leads to things that are negative, uh, depression and uh, all anxiety, all kinds of things it will lead you into that you don't want to go there. God bless you, Michelle, and others who are joining me, those who are not um, um, saying anything or making comments or whatever. I appreciate you being on here with us on tonight. Amen. There is a word from the lord be praying for me so that uh, i can hear from the lord to see what he's saying to us on sunday morning do pray for your your first lady and your uh the, the mother here <laughs> amen i want to hear from the lord i don't want to say anything that god didn't uh ordain or uh unction me to say amen so it's good to see all of you on here and i'm trying to see if there were any more announcements but continue to support uh west haven let me give you a shout out would you send up some hearts and some thumbs up for yourselves you are doing so great supporting the ministry you are doing it yes you are would you give set up some hearts and some thumbs up go ahead and do it please i want you to know that you are really uh doing well and i've tried when i can get pastor to really focus to let him know that you are supporting amen even though we're not coming together as a matter of fact you're doing a uh phenomenal job give it to yourselves give it to yourselves amen and i want you to know that we appreciate that the ministry has to go on regardless amen and so the lord is blessing and he's doing some great hey takisha and sister rogers and uh Dorothy, good evening, good evening. My computer, I don't know, it's I have an apple, but I'm telling you, uh, sometimes I don't see uh, some of your comments right away. Amen. And so, um, but I'm seeing you now. And Sister Bobby, love it. And others, I see you, some of you now. Praise God. God is an awesome God. He's just good. Amen. 
And I had an experience. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. But I had an experience today, you all. It was time for me to see one of my, my doctors, one of my specialists. And I did have some things going on, even though it was time for my, my uh, visit. Guess what? No, I didn't physically go. But I had my doctor's visit by sort of like a FaceTime that the doctors do. And I visually, my doctor and I saw each other. And we talked and resolved some things. Now, that is technology. Do you hear me? I didn't even have to leave my house. I had my checkup in my bedroom. <laughs> Isn't that something? Amen. So I didn't even have to get out, and I was appreciative of that. Hey, Amber, and let's see, Sister Burnett and Michelle Harrison, Adrian Carter, just doing a roll call here, because once I get started teaching, if they come on a little late, I can't stop in the middle of the teaching. Uh, but I see all of you coming in. Hello, hello. Amen. God is such an awesome God. It's just so uh, exciting to see you on here. Amen. And as I speak, uh, the website is being uh, developed. And like I say, there will be some things on there, but the, you'll be able to connect to the website from this page right here. I'm telling you everything. I'm trying to slide people over here before we really get to rolling. And I might not be saying very much on that other page. So I need you to uh, encourage people and invite people to like this page, Dr. Viv's Kingdom Chat. I need you to like this page so that you will know when things are getting ready to happen and when I'm getting ready to minister. Amen. And so uh, by the same token, uh, we're working on um, the marketing of this ministry so that we can reach gl people globally. It was prophesied to me and I did not understand how that was going to happen. I do not like to fly and I'm going like, if it's going to go global, God's got to deliver me because I do not. I'll fly. I do fly, but I don't like flying. So here we are. We never know what the Lord is doing. And so I'm appreciative to the Lord for whatever he planned he has for my life and for your life as well. Amen. Stay centered. Stay focused. Uh, don't let anybody uh, discourage you. And don't let anybody uh, uh, pump you up either. Uh, because it's about God and his glory. And we say that people of God, but I'm telling you, we're really not. Hello, uh, Deacon Perry. God bless you. Welcome. Give my love to the wife. I just love that wife of yours. She's a sweetheart. Amen. So we appreciate you coming on, on this evening. Amen. As everybody's coming in, I'm going to go ahead and have a word of prayer and we're going to go ahead and get started. I would encourage you to please bring your Bibles to the broadcast have it on the side on your phone or have it where somewhere or maybe just your um your a bible between leather uh binding or, or have your bible so you can kind of keep up with you may have something on your computer where you can kind of kind of read but at least uh you need to write down the scriptures so that you can go back and meditate on those and and michelle that's another way baby that i used to do is uh, I like good teaching and I love good preaching. And uh, that's why we started the sermon notes in our church. I was the one that developed the, the spiritual notebook. And in that spiritual notebook that I developed for the members, amen, a uh, little small spiritual notebook, there was a place for sermon notes. You need to do that. Uh, write down the passages of scripture, go back home and notes that bless you and go back home and from your church, when we're at the local church or wherever you are, and meditate on those and study those passages so that it can be um get way down in your spirit man amen so tonight if something blesses you i'm asking you to click the hearts and click the thumbs up uh that lets me know that somebody was blessed on this evening amen amen i love each and every one of you and we're going to get ready to get into our study of the word of the lord amen Father God, we just honor and praise you for this privilege and this opportunity to just stand in your stead, <clears throat> to give the word of God to your people that we may grow. You gave it to me first and you blessed me first. And then my task and my, my privilege is to share this same word under your anointing with the people of God. 
touch their minds and hearts and you know where they are right now you know what they're going through uh god you we're hearing about the postal system and we have a member that members that are uh, um, employees there we ask that you will resolve that situation and if you choose not to that you will i know you're going to open the doors for your people and so we're decreeing and declaring that in the name of jesus you know what you're doing and we just want to uh, be uh, involved in this season uh with what you're doing and we give you all the glory honor and praise and we want no flesh to glory in your sight in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I've been getting so many testimonies and uh, people in tears uh, texting me, Sam, in tears uh, because of the word of God, especially the one that I did with the women only. God did some things that I would never know. Some people did email me. And on this site right here, I have an email that's attached. So God is blessing. It's, it's the VMW Ministries at gmail.com v for vivian m for my middle name w for my last name west and vmw ministries at gmail.com it is attached to this particular page where you are and if not you now have the name of that by email that you can email me so people are emailing me of course the notifications are coming up and uh, i'm just appreciative because that tells me that uh, God is being glorified. His people are being blessed. Amen. And so, at the, hey, Cecile, there's my friend all the way from Florida, uh, uh, Supervisor Cecile Collins. Amen. Amen. I think we got our uh, papers together. If not, she was a year before me, but I think we got them together. And I'm just so delighted to have her on here tonight. I'm honored to have one of the supervisors on here with me. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. We're going to go into session seven of our Bible study and uh, we are still dealing with the tricks of the trickster on the church and we know the trickster is the devil himself we've already if you have not uh, played the videos do go back and, and play videos one through six I think my daughter was trying to do a uh, video four today she may have been a little bit behind because she couldn't come on the broadcast but do go back and and look at all of the identification of satan how he got started why did god create him all of that is on those videos and some areas that i deal with about how satan is tricking the people in the church i'm even looking at now and i don't like to deal with this because you got so many varying opinions but god has the last say and god has the knowledge of all of this that's going on you know we're judging people and saying things all out of context we're talking about some end time stuff that is not biblical it's not lining up with the word of god so that it, you know as a teacher that really disturbs me because it means that somebody is not giving the people what they need and so it's just it, it it's it's something to to behold people making declarations and deciding what they're going to do without seeking the face of god and and amen and so we've lost some people because of the way this thing is being handled we've lost some patriarchs and some matriarchs and so we don't want to uh, get foolish uh, we don't want to get finicky and foolish as people of god but we because people who are not saved are watching us they're watching our behavior they're watching our language and uh, hearing our verbiage as well so let's be cautious and careful uh, if you don't know, you're not sure, and you just talk an opinion, you probably don't need to say anything. Just keep your mouth and pray. Keep your mouth and just pray. Because whatever is, is. Now, that's what you got to get out on inside of you. Whether you say anything or not, the best thing you can say at any time, and especially now since some people's attentions have, get, have been pulled in, is to give the gospel. Give the good news of Jesus Christ. Not about your opinion about this and that. And uh, when you do that, God will be pleased and the Lord will be glorified. So let's not be judgmental and uh, pointing fingers at people. There's so much of that going on. And the church doesn't need to be involved in it. The members in the body are connected. And we should not be involved in doing things like that. So on tonight, oh, I believe I saw my, my great niece over here. She's back and, and her husband as well, Pam and Deverett. So glad to hear, see you. They're all the way in Michigan. So glad is it yeah it's Michigan yeah and I'm so glad delighted to have them on here tonight my kin folks you all my kin folks all right I, as I just say it um 
tonight I uh, in in tune uh, in line with what I just said uh the the question came up to me on this evening and the Lord said deal with it and uh this is session uh 7 uh, but I want to deal with how separate are we from the world and I know we're doing the the uh the social distancing and all of that I'm not talking about that I'm not talking about that at all I'm not dealing with that we have enough said about that but I want to talk about how separate are we from the world? And when I talk, when I talk about the world, I'm talking about anybody who is not giving their life, uh, their lives to Jesus Christ. They're in the world. Anybody who's tied into the system and they have not tied into the Lord Jesus Christ, they have not accepted Him as their personal Savior. They are, are part of the carnal world, the world, the sinful world. And I want to know. Can people see a difference between us and the world? Do you have to open your mouth and say that you belong to the Lord? Can they look at your demeanor, your face, your, your countenance, and your dress? I think we ought to dress appropriately. I think we, ought to, we, ought, we shouldn't look like street women. Uh, we shouldn't look like um, pimps and, and, and prostitutes. As people of God, I know you have the freedom to put on whatever you want to put on. Hey, Cosil. Hey, darling. And so uh, that's the freedom that you have. You have a freedom to sin. Oh, come on in this house. I didn't want to go this way, but that's the way the Lord has taken me. You have, I dealt with the freedom of choice in, in the earlier video. You have the freedom to sin. Whenever you decide to sin, God gave you that gift of choice. Because he does not want anybody as a robot worshiping him and, and obeying him. He wants you to do it because you love him and he knows he loves you. But God so loved the world that he gave. That, that, that was the expression of his love to us. And so he doesn't want you coming to him because you feel like, you know, a lot of people, and then we need to be fearful in the sense of going to hell, but not in the sense of, I'm only giving my life to Christ because I want, but if that's going to pull you in, but you need to learn something different once you get in here, you need to learn the love of Jesus. Because if you learn the love of Jesus, then you can be so connected to him, you will share that love with others. That's the great commission. That's what we are called to do. So I'm just looking at how we're behaving now, and not even now, my, before all of this, we're mixing and we're mingling with carnal Christians. What do I mean by that? Paul talks about um, carnal Christians all through the book of Hebrews and uh, all through his epistles. He alludes to those people, uh, even in the Corinth, or the Corinthian church was the worst church. Everything that could go on in a church that's wrong um, ex was exemplified in the Corinthian church among the Corinthian believers, uh, people in that church. And so here we are uh, mingling. We're mingling in your church. In your church, there's some carnal Christians. There's some people who are coming. They may be faithful. They may hold positions. They may hold um, licensing credentials to be preachers and evangelists and what have you. That does not take from the fact that if they are not walking circumspectly, if they're not walking in the spirit, then you are walking in carnality. It means that you are allowing your flesh to guide you and that you are not an example, not only in the body of Christ, but you're not an example to the world. And so you are looking more and acting more like the world than and you, you've given your life to Christ, but you're not following him. You are not being disciple. That's a carnal Christian. That's a carnal Christian. And so I don't want to be in that category. God bless you, Evangelist Crutchfield and uh, Maurice Bond and uh, Sister Fair. Amen. God bless all of you coming on. And so we're mingling and we're mixing uh, with the carnal Christians in the church. We're, we're mingling with the sinners and we're mingling with the hypocrites. These three categories uh, really defy and, and de uh, desecrate uh, the name of Jesus Christ and I spoke on the name if you want to get the Sunday morning message I talked about a uh, hallowing uh, how to hallow why do we hallow the name and so the name of, of Jesus is his reputation every part of his name there's so many names for God until it, you can't um, have the only one name that it's wrapped up in is Jesus Christ but you have the varying names simply because 
There's so many facets to God. God is such a vast um, being, a vast entity. Until you can't just describe him in one sentence. You can't just describe him in 15,000 books. You can't just describe him when you're up teaching. He's so indescribable. You can tell people uh, how you feel about him, but when you start trying to describe him, really sometimes trying to describe how the experience that you have with him, it's almost impossible because his, the experience with him is almost where you can't uh, find the words. Amen. That's just the, the kind of God that we serve. So when you mingle, and you know the difference when you mingle with the carnal Christians that always have jokes, always get the, 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 the nasty jokes. Uh, when you mingle with them and you mingle with the sinners and you mingle with the hypocrites. I'm not saying that you don't go to church with them, but they should not be in your bosom and where you fall and you hang out together. Something's wrong with that picture right there because you have uh, uh, some things that you don't have in common. Amen. So what you have to be careful of is the fact that people can influence you especially you like you know i got people with certain personalities that they you just they just draw people it doesn't mean they're saved all the time they just have that kind of drawing card that kind of magnetic personality and so you have to be careful it's okay to to uh, to talk with these people sometimes because you may be able to say something or do something uh, that will encourage them to make a change and make a turn and allow the lord to trans uh, transform them where they need to be transformed but you should never have these people where you are mingling and mixing with them by choice because you want to get into a good with them. Paul <clears throat> defends his ministry concerning, he's talking about uh, this separating uh, from the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, first he has to defend his ministry because of those people who not only spoke against him, but also, uh, the, also against the gospel that he was preaching. That's a dangerous thing. Sometimes when people don't like you or there's some jealousy uh, concerning how the Lord is using you and you're different and you just don't do things like they do and you try to walk the straight and narrow, people will talk about you. They, will, they, they misunderstand you and sometimes they do understand you. That's why they talk about you because they are not measuring up to Christ. And what they don't understand is we're not asking you to, we to we're not supposed to measure up to each other. We're supposed to grow into the measurement that uh, will be weighed in the balance with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you find people who will, they're all in your churches. I don't care. I'm going to tell you this. My bishop, my jurisdictional bishop said something. I, I'll, I'll quote it every now and then. And he says that uh, in every church, there's at least one nut. You got at least one, one nut. One that you can't, you know, they just got, they not going to agree with everything. They not, they just, I mean, they not going to agree. I don't care what. Uh, and so you're going to have those people in your church. They're planted there. And they can be planted there and destroy. Or they can be planted there and those that are spiritual can put so much heat of the Holy Ghost on top of their heads until they'll either leave or say, I got to get this right. I got to get this together. But you've got so many people that are blending in and mingling in. And, and you can hardly tell uh, which ones are saved and which ones... That should not be. That should not be. The enemy is tricking us. He's a trickster. He is tricking us and we are not aware of his tricks. We just say, oh, that's sister so-and-so. She has such a, a jovial personality and all. That's okay. But when it crosses the line and the lifestyle and the commitment and the worship doesn't measure up to commitment, something is wrong person needs God to do something for them and so we're mingling and mixing with the carnal Christians the sinners and the hypocrites Paul has to defend his ministry because he doesn't want let me tell you what I part of the thorn other than Satan attacking uh, um, Paul himself the thorn the one of the biggest thorns that I think that he mentioned over in the last over in 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 is the thorn of of the fact that as fast as he would preach the truth of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, 
false prophets and false teachers will come behind him and sow bad seeds. That was the thorn because he had given his very life. He had a physical ailment. Or, or he was a sickness or whatever was going on in his body. He'd given his all. Amen. For the gospel. Because he, he knew he owed God. Because he had fought the saints. He had held the coats of people who would, who killed the saints. He watched the saints uh, being assassinated. And so he knew he owed God his all for his deliverance. And so he gave his life for the gospel. He wrote more than anybody else. He had more, he had more to give because he defied God the more. Amen. Isn't that something? Uh, sometimes the worst sinners are the ones that make the best evangelists and make the best teachers and make the best prophets and prophetesses because they owe God. They know for God to turn them around and, and, and set them on straight street. It took a miracle. It took something that was more powerful than they would ever be, the blood of Jesus Christ. And so here he is. He's defending his ministry not because he feels like uh, he's not... Um, putting out the right thing or exemplifying the right behavior. He wants the people in the Corinthian church to stop it, turn it around. You, you're messing up. So he's beginning to defend his ministry. So they'll understand you're already following someone who's following Christ. And so in verse 12 of second Corinthians chapter six, Paul says your focus is the wrong thing. Now this is what's going to get some of us tonight. I'm sorry if I step on any toes. Uh, that's just it. The, the word is what it is. I'm defending the gospel tonight. Paul says your focus is on the wrong thing. He told them instead of looking at the bios of leaders, the recommendations given about themselves and their religious credentials, who these people know and how much money these people have and how they dress in uh, the latest of the fashions and and he said they should have been closely scrutinizing the character of these people who were really preaching a falsehood. He says, why are you focusing on all of this stuff, these credentials and how far they've <coughs> been in the nation and the world and <coughs> who they minister to? That's all good in your resume. But that's not how you judge whether or not people are in the body and whether or not they are really and truly hooked up with God aligned with the master and so i watched that I, you can say all these things and <coughs> prophesy and do all this stuff but i'm telling you i watch your behavior when the service is over i watch your behavior when i see you somewhere else i watch your behavior your lifestyle seeing your commitment how you carry yourself how much do you love the lord i'm going to deal with that uh, give you some pointers on how to make sure you are separate from the world and not blending and mingling in so it said they should have been closely scrutinizing their character, their spiritual walk. It's not the external, uh, but the internal where the Holy Spirit dwells. What is their testimony with God that God's approving of? What does God know uh, about you? What does he say about you? Come on now. And that's what we want to look at. What does God uh, say? Who who, who knows everything? God knows everything. What does he have to say about you as a leader or other people as leaders? Your leaders are the people. Do you know why this is critical? Your leaders are the people who help build you spiritually. They watch out for your soul. Even though the pastors are the main people that are responsible for that, so are people who teach and preach, come on, and prophesy. You need to be careful because you're dealing with the most delicate part. Uh, of God's heart and that's the souls of people and so in Romans chapter 2 that's the scripture tonight the next scripture Romans chapter 2 verses 28 and 29 from the English Standard Version ESV for no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly because I see you have the Jewish features and all of that and you do the circumcision he says nor is circumcision outward and physical he says, but, here's the contrast, I love the buts in the Bible, but a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, but by the Spirit, not by the letter, meaning the law, what's written in the law. It's by the Holy Spirit, it's the capital S here. His praise is not from man, but from God. 
If God praises you, you're measuring up. So the greatest credentials people of God, I know we have them and that they have a their good purpose, you know, in our church. <laughs> uh, but let me tell you, the greatest credentials that you can have is servant of God. The greatest credentials you can have would say servant of God. Second Corinthians, let's go to chapter four. Let's look at verses eight through 10. The ESV version of the Bible says we are afflicted. We dealt with that the other day in every way, but there goes the, but, but not crushed. We're perplexed. We're confused sometimes, but we're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, misunderstood is what it's saying. We're, people have done sometimes in this day, physical persecution, uh, 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 they're uh, persecute, uh, slander your reputation, but you're not forsaken. Don't worry about that. If they don't accept you, they reject you. You're not forsaken. You're not an orphan. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus, look at this, may also be manifested in our bodies. When we, he talked about in the first chapters of Corinthians, he talked about the death of Jesus and what that meant <clears throat> and what it meant to us. But then he comes down and he's defending his ministry. And so he says, even the life of Jesus, you, you see that in me, the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. You see his life in us, but you saw, uh, uh his death when he went to Calvary. Amen. And we speak of his death because without his death, we could not have life. That's what Paul is saying here. Satan has planted, uh, blinded leaders in our churches. He has, in, they have infiltrated, they've worked their way up. They have done whatever it could take carnally for the external. They know, they knew that people were looking for the external. They were looking for the degrees. They were looking for the certificates and all of those kinds of things that look very good on the resume. And mind you now, I have them. It, there's nothing wrong with having them, but you got to have, uh, with that, you got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. You got to have an anointing of God on your life because you can, can know the, the 23rd song, but baby, you got to know the shepherd. You've got to, hello, Pastor Granville, you've got to know the shepherd. A lot of people know how to extrapolate and to, to uh, expose the 23rd Psalm and, and make you stand up and want to throw your purse. But that is not a guarantee that they know the shepherd. The Lord has his anointing on those who know him. He makes a distinction. There's a distinction between the carnal folk and the folk who are, are walking in uh, the spirit and, 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 and trying to obey the word of the Lord because they know that has, that's the command. That's what God has called us to do. That's why we're in the body and not to make a name for ourselves. The only name we need to make for ourselves is I'm a child of God. Anointing of God is on my life, but everything points back to Christ. It points back to the Holy Spirit. If the Lord is using me, it's the Holy Spirit. I surrender, but I can't do anything effective without his anointing. So Satan has planted blinded leaders to hamper the church. And I, I just detest, I, I, be genuine when you are, are introducing people or talking about how wonderful you think people are in the things of God. Don't do that stuff because you got a position and you, you're looking for another one. Or you want to be, uh, to, people say, suck. You want, don't do that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. It's, it's not, it's not a good look. My girlfriend, excuse me, my girlfriend always says, it's not a good look for you. Don't do it. God is not pleased with that. Because then we become, Paul talks about men pleasers. Then we become men pleasers. And I think that's in the book of Philippians. We become men pleasers. And when you become men pleasers, then you are not a God pleaser. Ah, uh, come on in here. And so he's now going to talk about the temple of the living God. He's not talking about the temple where they go to worship that we've been missing. And that's, that's okay. But he's talking about this body being a part of the temple, uh, being a temple. And each member of the body makes up the temple. And so in verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says, do not be unequally yoked 
Now, let's go back to those three categories I gave you. It, that means you're trying to uh, run and have the sidekick with the carnal folk, with the center folks. Come on in here. You, you, you can't do that like in the world. You can't do it. You can't do it. He says, do not be. I mean, you can do it, but the warning is here. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what? I'm going to put it in my vernacular, but I'm going to read what ESV says. For what partnership has righteousness with loudness? What in the world do you want a close relationship with a, a, a pimp? If anything, you want to talk to them about Christ and keep moving, keep it moving. Amen. Everything we do should be for the glory of the Lord. You should not find your best friend being somebody who does not love the Lord. Somebody who wants to go out and party. Somebody who wants to sip the alcohol. Somebody who wants to smoke the reefer. We don't what they call it dope now. That should not be. You can't be equally yoked with that person. Even in your marriage, you have to be careful before you marry and make sure that that person loves the Lord. That's unequally yoked. Now they may, you may be blessed for that person to come and give his life, but you're taking a great risk to marry someone who's not saved. I don't care if he was raised up in church or she was raised up in church. If they don't know the Lord, they're not committed to the Lord. That means you're going to have a struggle in that area, in that relationship. Got to do it God's way. So that's part of the suffering. You know, we say, oh, you know, I'm suffering because somebody talking about you, baby. You got to suffer sometimes just to do what the Lord says do. You got to suffer, make your, uh, <coughs> excuse me, crucify your flesh. And we don't hardly want to do that. Then he says, or oh, what fellowship has light with darkness? The two can't mix. Oil and water don't mix. Then he says in verse 15, what accord has Christ with Belial? We want to get into Belial, but that's a totally opposite of the, of the Christian. Amen. And the one who worship in the Lord Jesus. Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement? Look at this, people. What agreement has the temple? Of God with idols, idolatry, worshiping things that are uh, 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 that you can look out there and and you can shoot it and kill it. You got the image of a bird, an image of, of a beast, an image of a lion. You you're worshiping these images. You're worshiping these people uh, in in the music industry, and they become your idols. You know, you, there's nothing they can do for us. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are, look what he's declaring what we are if we're in the body of Christ. And Satan knows it. He's tricking us. He's having us do everything that the Bible says don't do. Now though, that part that I just read to you, be unequally yoked and all, some people are doing some of it and not the other. But if you, if you mess up in one part, you think God's going to be pleased because you're saying, well, I just messed up in this part right here. No sin is sin. So we excuse ourselves. We give ourselves passes because we don't uh, uh, mess up at all areas. Well, I um, I don't drink alcohol a lot. I just sociably drink and sip a little wine for dinner. You know, a little wine is good for you. Yeah, we come up with all these excuses, and and we can be we can be uh, run under the table if we took that word of God and then took in the natural sense of what wine does. Are we are we that fickle? Are we that spiritually mentally deranged that we I mean some things are just common sense even the people in the world wondering why you are, are sipping they, they enjoy you being in the company with them and but they I promise you there's no respect for you though you're gonna lose some respect there because you there's supposed to be a different we're we're separate from the world we're not like the world we shouldn't be and then he says, I will make my dwelling, he starts quoting now, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they should be my people. Therefore, he's, in other words, since this is the case, go out from the midst, from the midst, leave, 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 come on. Uh, I, I'm going to dwell with those who, 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 who love me and who, who receive me. So these people don't love me. It reminds me of the, the, the two people in Psalm 1, you know. Uh, the one that walks according to the godly standards. And the one that walks uh, uh, like a sinner. Amen. And the Bible says, but he, uh, he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now that's, that's, that's how we want to walk. We want to be steadfast and stable. 
in the word and stable in the things of God, stable in our walk. Sometimes we may veer to the left or right, but we already know. We know when we do get back on track. Don't wallow in it. Don't let it be named that that's how she is. That's a dangerous one right there. You lose your, your testimony. You can't witness to people. The Lord is not glorified. The Lord is not pleased. So what are you living for? Mm -mm. We don't want to go down that pathway. The enemy's tricking us though. It says, therefore go out from their midst. And the, and the King James Version says, go uh, out from among them. Separate from, from yourself, from them. And be separate from them, says the Lord. And touch not unclean things. No unclean thing. And then I will welcome you. When you remove yourself from those things that are not pleasing in the sight of God. He says, then, look at the time word. You don't, don't run over time words. Then I will welcome you. Don't you want to be welcomed by the Lord? Don't you want to embrace you, him to embrace you, embrace your ministry, embrace your, 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 your everything about you? Then he can bless you. He can pour out his blessings upon you. I'm telling you, the Lord blessed me so people start seeding into my life on here, especially, uh, yes, with integrity, baby, yes. Uh, uh, just some things I needed to do ministry-wise, and, and, and God just blessed me. And I had some speaking engagements, amen, and, and the Lord blessed me so that whatever was going to be given, I don't think it would have been that amount. So God is just good. Just walk up right before him, and you have to learn to wait on him. So he says, let's finish just this down to verse 18 he says then i will welcome you and i will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me and i love that relationship i have so many spiritual sons and so many spiritual daughters amen and even pastors and pastors wives i love pastors wives and 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 that that simply means that you are helping guide them. You you walk that road and you've been down that path. You've made those mistakes and you've lived to tell about it and, and you've gotten yourself back on track and you learn more about the Lord. You learned a lesson about yourself and you, you learn how to do not to do certain things and you learn to do certain things. That makes you a spiritual father or mother. And I love that. I love that position in the body of Christ. But God says, I will be a father to you. And that's the highest uh, father you can have. It's not the natural. Because just we're limited, fathers and mothers in the spiritual sense. But God says, I will be a father to you. He's all knowing now. You want to know anything? He can tell you. He's omnipotent. Come on. He can, he, he's everywhere. I'm not present. He said, you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. He put the signature at the end of this. He puts his signature there. Now, when it talks about them, which group, which, which group makes up them? Well, I, I named those three categories up there. But let's kind of describe these people. Uh, these people who, uh, when it says separate from them, uh, they are people who don't obey the truth. They'd rather believe a lie than the truth. They'd rather obey a liar than uh, someone telling them the truth. Uh, they prefer a, a weak doctrine, a man-made doctrine. They, they, think, they see, think it's okay to do uh, vices, like it's okay to smoke and it's okay to drink. And my heart goes out to people who come to Christ and they've given their lives and they're having a struggle uh, to quit. And, and Michelle is on here tonight. She's a perfect example. I ministered to her one Sunday uh, about four months ago. And I called out a vice and I said, you're in here. And the Lord um, touched her heart and she came down. And from that Sunday to, to now, because she told me the other day, mother's been four months. She's not had another a, another drink of alcohol. She's not had another uh, uh, cigarette. And she's not smoked anymore. That's a testimony. Somebody ought to send up some hearts and somebody, God being glorified here and send up some thumbs up. That's the power of God. That's God's grace. That's his mercy. Come on. And if you're bound by some of these habits, God can deliver you. He can do it. And I'm so grateful. And, and I try to keep her encouraged. She said, Mother, I need something to read. I'm quarantined. Give me something. So I, I put some stuff together for her because I want to see her grow. Amen. And I want to see the Lord bless her. And she went on back to school. I encouraged the people about, you know, doing something with their lives. And 
she didn't have a diploma she went on back she's working on uh, uh finished her classes and she told me she had some good grades look at god he blessed the natural and the spiritual god is awesome he's just an awesome god so th this group of people you want to separate yourself you should have a, a close friendship with them and these people defame the character of god by their behavior uh, they don't even have a conscience in things that they do. It's about as bad as these people running around raping people and all no conscience about it. Just they that they have n nothing uh, um, that makes them feel bad or guilty at all. But here's my challenge for you tonight. We, we don't have a few more minutes. Here's my challenge to you. It was to me first, to everybody that's on um, the broadcast tonight. I want you to be a God chaser. I want you to be a God chaser. And there is a book out called that. I, mine is packed up. I hadn't seen it in years. But there is a book out. And, and uh, it, it, it lines up with um, Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water brook. You know when a deer gets to running and running. Then he's, he's panting because he needs water. And he's thirsty. He needs to be. So he's wanting and he's, he's craving it. It's an insatiable desire to wet my throat. He says, as the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And then we get another passage in Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Can we can we have ownership? Do you do you know that you you belong to God and and you're pleasing in His sight? You can call on Him and say Father or Abba or say Oh God, uh, you're my God. I can own uh, say that I'm 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 His and He's mine. Oh God, you are my God. The psalmist says in six sixty three, Psalm sixty three verses one and two and verse eight. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. I seek you because I'm thirsty, is what he's saying. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty. Talking about the physical side when you're thirsty. My flesh longs for you in a dry, and, and, and it's a metaphor, and thirsty land where there is no water. This, this country, this world is thirsty, you all. We have the living water. That's what Jesus told the woman at the well. We have the refreshing water we have what they need we have what everybody needs that does not know christ and we're doing everything but that he says so i have looked for you look at here oh my god this is blessed be you all i have taken my eyes i've gone in with my physical eyes i've gone in with my spiritual eyes when I come to church, because we gather for a lot of different reasons, Mother's Days and all this stuff. But he says, I come to the sanctuary looking for you. If nobody else shows up, if only three people show up, I came looking for you to see your power and your glory. And then he says in verse 8, my soul follows close behind you. This is Psalm 63. Verses 1 and 2 and then verse 8. My soul follows. God chaser. We chase it after God. My soul follows close behind you. And your right hand. I told you so something of the right hand stands for power. And my right, your right hand upholds me. Another passage of scripture dealing with chasing God. Philippians 3. Verses set verses seven and twelve, not through twelve, but verse seven and verse twelve. It says, "But what things were gained to me?" You know, I could just spout off, and I don't do that. People, anybody that knows me, I've never done that. Oh, I have this degree, and I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Whatever is in me that God has done with me, and with whatever degrees or whatever I have, it should emanate from me. Period. The anointing plus the knowledge of the word should come together. And an understanding of God should emanate. That's enough credentials. Well, he says, but what things are gained to me? These I have counted loss for Christ. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected. 
but I press on. I'm pressing toward perfection. You can't stop uh, at the wine house, at the liquor store, and say you pressing. Oh, I hear God now. You can't stop by your girlfriend's house when you have a wife and then say you pressing. No, you've stopped. You parked in Sin Valley. <laughs> Look at God. That's not in my notes, you all. That's the Holy Ghost. So you can't stop. Come on. Where they're rolling dice and, and, and playing money uh, 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 to get a, a bag. Come on in here. You can't stop there and then tell me you're pressing on. He says, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on. Why? That I may lay hold of that. That's a pronoun. Of that. Relative pronoun. For which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I want to lay hold of that. What is the that? That same thing that Jesus Christ also lays hold of me. Philippians 3 verses 7 and 12. So I can tell a God chaser. I can tell a God chaser, one who has an insatiable hunger for God, they're going to come to Bible study. You don't have to pump them, prime them. Where's sister so-and-so? Where's brother so-and-so? They come. They're excited. They're excited about the word of the Lord. But more than that, they're walking it out. They're living it. It's one thing to come and be excited about hearing it and get the knowledge of it. But your knowledge has to be walked out in practicalities. In your daily life, in your lifestyle, does you no good to know chapters and can quote chapters and, and all of that and expose and, and, and deliberate on it if you haven't walked it out? Like I said, it's one thing to know the 23rd Psalm, but it's another thing to know the, the shepherd. Amen. So God favored David. He messed up, but he knew what to do. Psalm 51 told us what he did. He asked God to forgive me, created me a clean heart, renew within me a, what, a right spirit. Amen. So look at here. Let's get this thing together now. Let's, let's, let's walk up right before the Lord. Let's chase after God. I promise if you chase after him, he's not going to run so hard he can't let you catch him. The kingdom needs more God chasers. People are seeking after him. Paul was the God chaser. He was transparent in how he lived his lifestyle. He had nothing to hide. Remember he talked about he considered none of his degrees and none of his accomplishment, accomplishments but anything but dung. And that's stuff in the bathroom. Dung. Amen. Human increment. So who is the God chaser? They have a serious passion for God. They respect God's laws, his rules. For, for the God to walk in kingdom. God is their priority. Matthew, y'all know that's one of my favorite. Matthew 6, 33, 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. Other words. Once you seek the first, it's written on your book. Once you seek the first, attached to the first are the things. Ah, uh, because once you seek him first, everything you need is in the kingdom. If you seek in the kingdom, there's nothing else for you except to give you a bonus. By attaching the, the, the material things that you desire, those other things that you desire, he'll attach it, but you got to seek him first. Therefore, do not be anxious. Ooh, that's good for us today, this passage. Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Ah, aim to please him. Aim to please God. Philippians 3, verse 7. But whatever gain I had, I counted. There it is. A loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything lost because of the surpassing worth. He's so worthy of knowing Christ Jesus. My Lord. For his sake, I have suffered. I went through. I've suffered. I went through. Jack, all the things we talked about earlier. I didn't mind going through those. It was tough. It was hard. It hurt. But I wanted to do it. I wanted to go through and come through it. Why? He said, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Those material things, those degrees, all of that money and fame. Huh? I count it as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. The rich young ruler, his problem was. His heart was wrapped up in his things. Come on in here. 
And Jesus knew where his heart was. So Jesus said, if you really want to go with me, sell everything you have. Because he's always said, oh, I know the Bible. I know the, the commandments. And he says, okay, sell everything. Here's your challenge. Sell everything you have. He says, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith, not your flesh and your feelings, people. And people are all wrapped up in their feelings right through here. But it's about our faith in Christ. We're being challenged. Your faith is being tested, people of God. <sighs> Glory. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him. You know why I go through all this? No, I be tested because I want to know him. And, and the power of his resurrection. And may share his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death. That by any means possible. Look at here. I may attain the resurrection from the dead. I want to be of those who are living in Christ Jesus. So when he's straining. He's, I'm straining toward this goal. So I'm pressing toward the mark. Verse 12 says, Not I have already obtained. Or am already perfect. But I press. And then we come down. The characteristics of a God chaser. Well. A person. You know that that person is a God chaser. By their godly attitudes. <laughs> by godly attitudes. Their unwavering faith. Their desire not being sensual, but it's spiritual, not in their senses, their feelings and all of that. They have an interest and their interests are all pointing upward. So first is our hunger for God. First seek ye. That's our hunger for him. Amen. And we don't want to confuse our flesh with the spirit of God. Bring back the old flame. The devil wants to bring them back. The old flame that used to turn that used to turn you on and turn you up, turn you out. He used to tempt us with ambition, porn, drugs, worldly friends and associates. Let me encourage you to discern false leadership. You got to be able to discern those people who are chasing after God. Weak leadership, they're not chasing after God. The ungodly folk leadership, they're not chasing after God. And you've got these things here. I'm telling you, you can discern. You can just look and tell. If they don't have these things lined up and, and they're not chasing the Lord, then they're not good leaders. Now, we know everybody, nobody's perfect, but you're striving. Paul has already said that. So what do we look for? They hunger for God. And they ask him for it. If you don't know, if you will be honest with yourself, you know, so you kind of carnal, you got your mind on this and that, you're not hungering after God. Then if you know that, I've been in, in certain situations spiritually, I didn't have it with, within me. Uh, I wanted it and it looked like I couldn't reach for, for God and looked like something was missing. You know what I asked? I said, God, give me that hunger for you. He will do that. He desires that. You find yourself in that place where so much going on in your life and, and things are hitting you left and right and knocking your head over here and, and throwing you back into the wall and, and you're feeling down, discouraged, rejected, uh, all of this, then it takes from you. It distracts you. It takes from you. And so what do you, you do? You don't try to play games with God. Just say, Lord, right now I don't feel the hunger. Help me to hunger for you. Give me that hunger, that desire for you that I need so that I can be close to you, that I can be pleasing in your sight. Hunger for him and then ask him for it if you don't have it. Seek God's glory in everything you do. When you go to do anything for the Lord, how is he going to be glorified in it? Delight yourself in him. Acknowledge him in all your ways, Psalm 37 and 4. Delight yourself in him. Get Feel real good about being saved. Feel real good about having God as your father. Delight in it. People will see it. It will just emanate from your personality, from your, from your uh, whatever comes across your lips. 
people will just know that they are one of those hungering for God. They may not know how to verbalize it. Always be prepared for spiritual warfare. Always, people. That's what's wrong with us now. We, this stuff hit us unprepared. God slammed us into the house. He slammed us in here. Amen. And here we are. What are we going to do with that? Now what are you doing with yourself? You in here? What are you doing with it? Have you learned anything? Always be prepared for spiritual warfare. Warfare has to be done everywhere you go. If you're the king, the devil is trying to tempt you and challenge you and take you out every day. And a passage of scripture for, for that is that Psalm 37. For always be prepared. And then for the spirit of warfare, I'm sorry, it's 1 Timothy 1 and 8. Always be prepared. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. But I'm going to have time to read all the passages. Then, we're near the end. Be willing to make whatever sacrifices for the Lord's name's sake in his kingdom. Lord, I don't want to defame your name. I can't do that. I can't say that. I can't think that. I can't let my mind go that direction. I can't allow the enemy to do that to me. So, Lord, here I am. I want to make a sacrifice and not do it. My flesh wants to do it. My flesh wants to tell her off. My flesh wants to go down the street. My flesh wants to go over there to that to that party where I just want to be with the people on my job. But you're going to make a sacrifice for the name of the Lord, for his name's sake. What? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We do it for his name's sake. Then we want to pursue God in his word. First Timothy first four verse uh, chapter four verse twelve. And then finally, be a kingdom man or woman of prayer. Be a kingdom man, woman, boy, girl of prayer. David sought God early. And Somewhere, I think it's in Mark 4, chapter 4, I think it is. It says, Jesus went out a great while before day and he prayed. He got up early and talked to the Father. It's essential to us being what God would have us to be. It's essential to us making sure we're not going to be tricked by the trickster. The devil is tricking the people of God. And we don't even see it. We're so caught up. We, all we know is flesh. So when that's all you know and you don't even know to seek anything else because you, you've watched other people and flesh seems to be the order of the day. Everybody's doing everybody's doing kind of what they want to do like they want to do it. And, and my church, we're, they let us do so and so and so. It's not about your church. It's about the word of God. What does God stipulated in his word? And if your church is condoning something that God has not stipulated, then you need to move quickly. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place because I just said you cannot grow and you cannot, those of you who are not saved, you cannot become a, a, a believer in Christ if your leaders are blinded. If your leaders are preaching something, they're not walking or refusing to preach something that they are not walking. Some preachers stay away from certain subjects because they know they're doing it. And so we have to be very careful because we're being tricked by the trickster, the church, the members of the body. Everybody's not being tricked. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that God always has a remnant. He all, hallelujah. He always has a people, a nucleus of people that say, I don't care what goes. I, I, I'm hanging. I, I know the God that I serve. God loves me. God gave his life for me. I was a mess before I gave my life to Christ. I was a wretch under, I, I can't do it. Y'all go on and do it. You, whatever you think you want to do. If y'all feel like it's going to do I can't do it. I can't be a part of that. You, you're making a sacrifice. You're not allowing your flesh to make you sin. Your flesh will make you sin. Uh, satisfying your flesh will make you sin. But you got to have a hunger for God. Get that word. And I'm not saying I'm not so deep and spiritual. You don't have enjoyment life you know but you're watching what you do it'd be wholesome you're gonna do movies and ways it has to be wholesome man i look i like a lot of comedy you know because so much stuff in the world but i'm telling you you can hardly go through a movie without the cursing and all and sometimes you just have to 
I found out that Amazon has a lot of very good movies. And it, it centered, uh, Christ is the center of a lot of movies on Amazon. So we want to do those things that are glorified because you get that stuff and it, it gets into your psyche. It gets, it becomes a seed. And you know anything, you will hear that word in your mind. I've had, to, I've had it to happen. You're going to, I've never been a curse at all. So the enemy is slick. He's tricking the people of God. And we're making. He's making us say, well, oh, it's just innocent. But it's not because your soul is at stake. So learn how to uh, pre appreciate God. Let him be the first in your life. Seek him. Be a God chaser. Chase God. I'm, I'm after you. I Whatever I can do, come after you, God. I want to be like you. He's trying to conform us to the, the image of his son. That's why he came, so we could look at him and, and see in, 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 with our own eyes uh, God embodied in, 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 in Christ. He says, now this is who you're going to follow. You don't see me, but I want you to see my son. And then the son said, when you see the father, you see me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And so here we are, people, in the last days. And the Bible says, if it weren't for the coming back of Christ, almost the very elect will be lost come on in here now and i'm i'm seeing it with my very eyes we're we're getting upset and we're getting hurt said we're hurting all this and the enemy's just doing stuff um, we take it in that and we're, we're making decisions and stuff that don't even make any sense amen they didn't tell us that we weren't going to have pain that we weren't going to be misunderstood and that we weren't going to be uh, uh, rejected and, and kicked to the side. It's part of our making. It's part of God building us and making us and putting uh, us together one sail at a time. One spiritual sail at a time till he uh, grows us into that body, that mature body, that perfected body that's pleasing in his sight. Amen. I thank God tonight for you, yes, ma'am, uh, Sister Teresa Woods, I'm thirsty. I am thirsty for the Lord, hungry for him, hungry for his word. And, and before I come before you, I'll ask him, God, what is it you want me to say to your people? What is the need? And then you all are telling me how blessed you are, how it's blessing you. Amen. And I appreciate God for that. So you be encouraged. This is all I have for tonight. I love each and every one of you. And I trust something was said tonight. To bless you, I ask that you would share the broadcast. Click your share buttons. I'm trying to bring people to this page because this is what's going to be happening, you all. So I'm trying to have the other two pages, uh, and then we have our church page. But and I post there, but I have those pages that I've developed. But I'm trying to bring everybody here to this page, except when I talk to women. That page, most these two pages, are my main page, Dr. Viv's Kingdom chat page, and the Kingdom Daughters chat with Dr. Viv's where well, I talk with just the ladies only. Please go in there if you haven't, ladies. Um, and if you've joined the group, that's a private page. That that one is. And go in there and, and review that uh, broadcast. But some people were blessed. Some people were really blessed with that. So uh, please go in there and view that broadcast. And I know that the Lord will touch your hearts and your minds. Well, I love you and I'm going to post the... I can't do my cash app. I have to do my PayPal. My cash app is locked and nobody has contacted me. So if you want to be a blessing to uh, the church, uh, here is the cash app for the church. It is West Haven Giving. And then if you want a blessing to um, Rima, that's my outreach ministry. It's Rima. Um, outreach. Okay, think. That's Cash App. I'm sorry. And um, then if you want to uh, be a blessing to me personally, uh, it's my PayPal. You have to type in my email address, and I don't have my. Let me see if I can get it right quick. Uh, I never could can uh remember uh what to type in. So let me see if I can find it right quick and post that for PayPal, uh, my PayPal. 
I mean, I'm just so delighted to have uh, my kin folks on here uh, tonight. My my great nephew and my great niece on here tonight. And I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you following me and keeping up with me. Uh, it's very encouraging to me. Amen. I'm trying to find my PayPal, you all. Uh, let me see. What I'll do if I don't get it uh, quickly here. Oh, here it is. Here's the PayPal. All right. It's um, PayPal. Got me. B. M. S. Six or seven. Okay, that's my, my personal um, PayPal. And then I'm trying to set up PayPal now for the church and for Rhema. I've just about finished Rhema's. And once we get the website up, you can write to that uh, my website and, and click on. And, and all of them will be connected to PayPal unless you choose the Cash App. I'm really concerned about some people having some issues with Cash App. So... Uh, I needed to have something else since they've locked me out and I can't even use mine. Yeah, Pam, bless you, sweetheart. Yes, indeed. All right, so God bless you. Those of you who would like to share, um, that's uh, the three ways that you can share. It's all good ground. I promise you it's very good ground. And so if you do, we appreciate that. Our local church, the West Haven Community Church, uh, my Rama Outreach is my uh, personal ministry. Um, and uh, also... Um, me personally, that will go to me personally, then that is PayPal. So eventually I have three accounts, three PayPal accounts for all three of these areas of ministry. I love you. Appreciate you. Keep me in your prayers and do please pray for my husband. Please, please pray for my husband. Please call his name up. Amen. I'm asking you to do that on tonight. Amen. I love each of you. Hi, uh, Superintendent Payton. God bless you. I didn't know you on here. God bless you. Amen. We are wrapping it up here. And uh, I was sad. The word of the Lord has gone forth and just dropping things in my spirit. And uh, I went into that on tonight. And, and basically, I'm just saying, uh, if you want to uh, escape the tricks of the trickster, you're going to have to chase. It's God, be a God chaser. We talked about what God chasers are. We talked about those who chase God in prayer, uh, David and Paul and, and all of that. And the Lord um, has blessed us in the word on tonight. I love each and every one of you. We're going to get off here and try to get a little rest. Amen. And I ask that you continue to pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. This young man, um, uh, Elder Payton, Michael Payton, has been of such a blessing to me ministry wise and um we want to call his name up in prayer as well and then pray for the churches everywhere the people everywhere and especially in our denomination uh with all that's going on with the deaths and all pray for those people who are losing their loved ones all over and especially the household of faith of the god in christ i love each and every one of you keep me in prayer and i'm going to pray for you and i love you and you can't do a thing about it god bless have a great evening